Okay, okay. I don't believe in equality of any kind, right? But yes, yes, yes. Why I do believe in gender equality specifically? Okay. Because men and women are different, different people. Mm-hmm. Like generally, like men and women have different behavioral traits, different interests, different capacity, different um attitude towards work, mm-hmm. different goals, and if you put people with different interests, different abilities, different um, different attitudes yeah. in the same game and ask them to play that game, you, ca- you cannot expect an equal outcome, right? So, data equality is a is a is a is a it's a bad goal to pursue because it's not naturally occurring. <laughs> so you know what I've noticed? What I've noticed is that. Everyone that I've that I've had there that has had that mic in their face, and when they start hearing their own voice through the headphone, they they feel like they have a chance in the, at a musical career. Actually, my voice sounds nice now that it's <laughs> now that it's it actually really nice. It's a sure effect. Yeah, a sure MV7 microphone effect. <clears throat> wow, it's so, a really nice mic. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. How much you get this? Undisclosed. <laughs> it's very expensive. <laughs> so, guys, <clears throat> you are welcome to a new episode where I have brought a very colorful friend. Not LGBT kind of colorful, just colorful personality wise. Wow, thank you for doing that. Clarification, I mean. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I mean, so my, there was a time you painted your nails and I was. I, I do I do want to paint my nails again. I tried one to make it. You'd have to use Michael. I do have to paint, I want to paint my nails again, actually. I, I spoke to one of my female friends. Yeah. To help me get a uh, nail polish. Actually, she got nude nail polish. She didn't get the colored one. I don't, I don't know why. Women are just like, I don't know. So you are slightly more colorful than I think. Is that what this is? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's the point of the entire... Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that means I did not do any favor then, because I said colorful and like... Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. All right. Round it up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I have a set of topics to discuss with you. Yes. These topics are what you might consider to be. Hold on a second. I'm trying to make sure that this audio is picking up my voice. Okay, it is picking up. <clears throat> These topics are disjointed. Yeah. But I want your opinion on them regardless. So, in no particular order, gender equality. I do believe in it. No, no, okay, okay, okay. I don't believe in any any equality of any kind. Any equality yes, of any kind. Yes, any kind. I think I am more opposed to the idea of equality of outcome because that one, that one has some. Even equality of opportunities has as issues. Okay, the pragmatism of equality of opportunity can be questionable, but the logistics of it actually yes, is questionable. But. I, I will not just throw it out there that it's not something I believe in. It thinks that things that well what I believe in is maximizing the chances of favorable, favorable outcomes, right? If like for example now you have a state or you have a country I want you want um want a I I um I like you people. I know I don't I high level of living, right? You want like to be a developed nation, right? Yeah. So Right now, the way the world is right now, you have to like maximize the productivity of people, and this might sometimes involve equality of opportunity, right? Because you are not, you are not, you are not, you are not like you are not a super computer, you are not a sage, right? You are not you are all God. Like even a playing field, you have every to, yeah, yeah, talent because, yeah, shine yeah. So you have to like without give people like not just a uh, somewhat gender. equal playing field, right? Yeah. To like extract the last like regardless of your yeah. sexual identity yes. your the last race. yeah to ex- my point is to extract the last drop of productive value right mm-hmm. from the from people to able to aspire to be their highest productive so are we a socialist wouldn't i make the argument that this is just you trying to exploit people if you're a socialist you're probably retarded <laughs> thank god i'm not a socialist um, but i think i'm slightly retarded to exploit people <laughs> to I don't know. Is your point that it's just going to say that it's it's yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's exploiting because you know it would be um the the bourgeois well, the, trying the, to take the, care the, of the advantage. main issues with socialism is that it looks at economic interactions as um as um a zero sum game, right? 
It's not a zero sum game, right? Winner takes all. It's not that. It's not. It's not that. The winner does not take all in economics, right? In most relationships, like between employer and employee, yeah. the employee is winning, winning his wages, winning salary, uh, uh, a stable salary, yeah. um, percent income, and the employer is also winning as well, right? And it's kind of risks that the employer takes. It's not the kind of risks that the employee takes. So, if you're on the basis of the kind of risks they are taking, the kind of inputs they are putting into the productive machine every right both of them are winning both of them are getting the most value for their for their salary especially in the free market economy because the employee if he's not getting enough value from his employer can change empl- but then employers, it, it, becomes, right? it becomes a question of where value is allocated because in in a capitalist mindset you would say the value is allocated in the some say it is time some th- some say it is um labor some say the value is is to money so the money you earn, the work you put in, that the time you spend trying to make that money, are two distinct things. But economic is not what I'm trying to get at today. Yeah. Let's get back into um, gender equality. Gender equality. Gender equality. Okay. So your your initial like let's 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 let's, 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 let's specifically talk about gender equality then. Okay, right? okay. I don't believe in equality of any kind, right? But yes, yes, yes. Why I do believe in gender equality specifically? Okay. Because men and women are different, different people. Mm-hmm. Like generally, like. Men and women have different behavioral traits, different interests, different capacity, different um attitude towards work, mm-hmm. different goals. And if you put people with different interests, different abilities, different um different attitudes yeah. in the same game and ask them to play that game, you can you cannot expect an equal outcome, right? So data equality is a is a is a is a it's a bad goal to pursue because it's not naturally occurring. Now, now that does not mean that um, um, you may not be given rights, right? Now, I'm trying to encapsulate your thoughts in a quote. Yeah, yeah. Um, where where there is freedom of choice, where there is freedom of choice, there is um, uh, there's inequality. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Where there's freedom people of are, choice, yeah, because people choose things. badly all the time, right? And some people choose wisely almost every time. Right, so Almost every time. Yes. Some people are very good at maximizing their value. Some people are very good at that. Very good. Okay. So what what do you think? Some people are very bad at that, actually. Some people make it their, their entire identity to push the narrative that there is need for gender equality. Okay. So here's what I want you to do. <coughs> I want you to make a straw man argument for why it's right. You know, because we can look at the political realm and the economic and then the social like one will say okay the role of a man in the household should be tantamount to the role of a woman in the household and then some might say that okay why are all the men the ones holding money why are all the men almost all the ceos like these are different dimensions of where people would want to agitate for the extent of equality between the sexes so make one argument for why it is a good thing to pursue why equality is a good thing to pursue, right? Let's, let's start with social, where you can say, okay, man should should not have any right to be the one that is king of the household because, hey, maybe he, he provides all the things. Okay, um, let's see. Um, the thing about that argument, mainly, yeah. I want to make it that you rest on a bunch of false assumptions, but here's what I think. False assumptions? Yeah, false assumptions. Here's what I think the proponents of gender equality think. Yeah. They're talking about um um equal social value and equal like equal um equal responsibilities in the home. Like they sh- there, sh- there shouldn't be money in the house or whatever. I think they are looking at it from the realm of um since we are all humans, right? Yeah. That means no human inherently has um any one one um right over the other and everyone should be treated equally, right? That means um the man and the woman they are like very indistinguishable. Right? So the man the woman is just a man with breasts mm-hmm. and the man is just a woman with penis, right? So it's just like arbitrary. You find something wrong with that kind of categorical it's, it's not it's not that you find something wrong it's just, it's just obviously not true. Like it's reduction is it's it's more than just biological components of you know this working flesh. Exactly. It's just it's not the 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 the, the, the wiring of men and women goes right to the brain. It's not because there are certain illnesses that men, like for example, now um, 
um this savant syndrome right where there's a uh you know this no have you watched young sheldon mm-hmm. where there's this like you know, doctor is a savant right yeah like i was like mad knowledge about it's not about savant syndrome is that it affects men and women differently that's that um that um that's in every way don't, don't you think a better example to for use here would be like um autism because autism is more rampant in men is that it's, it's 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 also a good example but i know specifically about savant syndrome okay okay it have, so, what do you call it? Savant syndrome. Savant syndrome. Yeah. Okay. It, affect, it affects mostly men, right? And even in women, the the way it's like the way it's it's uh it plays out is different. Women that have savant syndrome are more social than men that have savant syndrome. Okay. So the argument you've made here is that is that the wearing is different. The wearing from the from bed is different. You know that they, you know, so for example that the social I call them social constructivists. They claim that um um that that's what we have to be to be a gender equality advocate that to be social construct constructivist they claim that the reason why when women and men are seen differently in human society is because of social reasons right because it's the is the is the software that society has downloaded into the woman so any woman that likes cooking that likes pink that likes because society because of society not because she was born like that and any man that likes fighting likes violence no they don't up, okay. with point that they don't they don't they don't say that about men and violence okay, right? okay. Let, let me try and push against that a little bit okay so this argument that um the social this argument that social constructivists make yeah i think it does have some value you know um it was aristotle that claimed that men are born tabula rasa empty slate and everything is written on them uh, now I, I find fault in that okay because i believe it's a bit of nature and nurture. But what would be a wrong rationale to make would be would be to say the reason women choose to go to pharmacy, for example, in society, or the reason most men are psychologists. You find most most men in use, you know, health, education. Yeah, most women, yeah. Yes, health, education, literacy yeah. and administration. Yeah. And you find most men in STEM. Yeah. So, we cannot attribute this categorization to just society. So the enforced yeah, it, of that what I'm saying, like yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, not, not society. That's basically what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm trying to say that it's a bit of both. It's the influence of society and the influence of biology. It's, okay, let's let's put it this way, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Let's put it this way. There's no, yeah. there's no way. Um, there's no way society does not have an impact, right, in in any given outcome. Yeah. Right. But if you notice a trend that is common in different societies, right, mm. that didn't have any cultural exchange, that trend is mostly biological. Mm. If A is present in society A, right, in society B, society C, society D, society E, across continents. Like cl- um, cross cultural study. Yes. Like of if, in- if you find a certain trend, common in societies that didn't have any cultural interaction, that trend is most likely due to biological factors. Like most women choosing to tilt more yeah. towards um career paths that are more or less taking care of other people. Is that and if you check every human society, everyone, every single one, every single human country, it's the same trend you find to people that say that is up society and downloading that uh, society downloading the, the 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 software to them is it just it just flat out wrong, and um, yeah. What I was saying earlier was that mm-hmm. um, what was everyone saying? Say I've forgotten. Well, we're talking about the the. Well, I was going to ask you to make some argument for you know places where inequality exists in household, but then we kind of went past that. Yeah. So now let's talk let's talk about the financial aspect of inequality because it is the most argument we may make. For for example, they say gender pay gap, you know. I think gender pay gap is a myth. I don't think it exists. Yeah. I think it is. It that's ex- that's, that's why I believe for it. Exists, it. Because for you. This, this, this okay. kind of this guy of clip that make it to Twitter. It be like wow, two men discussing gender. And <laughs> 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 both agree that it does not exist. <laughs> okay, but yes, it does not exist. Quotes me. <laughs> you know, you know. Okay, okay, it exists, but for good reasons. <laughs> Oh, that is even worse. <laughs> no, no. Okay, okay, okay. I can, I can never just find my own, my own stars here. So, why, 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 why do you think so? Why do you think so? Okay, so here's the thing. 
men and women work different hours. Yeah. You know, one of the arguments you make when you were talking about why there are different outcomes yeah. is that men and women have different attitudes towards work. Yeah. Okay. A man could choose to, like most work fatalities are men. Like how many women would choose to work in the sewers, like have all these odd jobs, even if they pay like really, really high. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So if a man, a man is more likely to work longer shift, yeah. statistically speaking. Yeah. So that means if we are working the same job, we're actually not spending the same hour working this. I wish you about that. Let me check. I mean, like it's work longer hours. <laughs> Let me post. Let me post your lie on your podcast. Okay, <laughs> all right. Do that. Yeah. We most likely find that I'm right. I, I don't think so because women are more con- conscientious than men. So I'm not. I'm not really sure. Mm, I don't think that's right. Let's see. You are searching. Let's see. Actually, yeah. that's true. Yep. Yeah. You have to break the silence. Actually, that's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah. I just correct. I knew that. I thought it would be opposite. I don't know. I, yeah. I I don't know why I thought that. I don't know. Just well, I mean, if you even if you go by your own argument that sometimes it's biology and sometimes it's nature, men are more of the go getters. So, oh, that's a sexist. That's not sex. That's just biological. Wow. Why are you why are you like trying to make a make a villain out of me? <laughs> Okay, okay. So now on yeah. the economic end, yeah. do you think how do you think econo- is it even desirable that we strive for equal pay across all fields? No. The unrealistic idea of it. It's not it's not desirable, I feel, because um the reason why pay is unequal is because of unequal inputs, right? I I know I'm actually very lazy. I know people that look work a lot harder than me. I kn- I think they would be um discouraged to work long those long hours and put that much effort into work if their pay was equalized with someone like me who does not work as much, right? So I think if you want to be more to give them more incentive to work and to produce more and to and to do their best, so I have to give them the incentives in terms of pay. And that means obviously unequal pay. Women and women. I don't think it's actually big. If I had a company, right, and um, men were any, men were any like a lot more than women. I think I don't think I would care. You think? I think if men were any more than women, I would most likely only employ only women. <laughs> actually, even when I, yes, if, now, if 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 it, it, it's way like that, it is to underpay women, right? All it, companies will like, employ it, women. Yeah, that is actually a very very good argument. I've read before, actually. Yeah, it's a mm. good argument. So anyway. But I'm like, I don't believe in Jedi. I don't believe it's a good thing to strive for. I think that, um, wait on all dimensions. All dimensions. All that. Di- all dimensions. Actually, after about it for a very long time. Even even at parties where they where they go, it's not even like pragmatic. At parties, believe, like women, believe, women, women I, free men. I be. believe the 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 best way to walk through this equality stuff is to treat people as individuals. Give the individual the because the as much as logistically possible, right? Give the individual the 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 best chance, the best opportunities. Yeah. He has to succeed, right? And if he does not succeed, well, so bad, bad luck for him. Move on with other ones that actually move on. And the thing that I'm saying this I'm saying I I keep using this word logistically because sometimes it's not logistically possible. For example, now if you had like if you had ten teachers, right? Mm-hmm. It's just a it's just a this is a this is a extreme example, but if you had ten teachers, I you had to pick twenty students out of maybe forty students. I want to train a chess grandmaster, right? And you knew the ancestry of the of the students, right? I you cannot like you don't have the time to write an exam or can just you have to just choose, choose arbitrarily. The best thing would actually just pick a bunch of Indians <laughs> and Chinese Jeez. without even like checking whether they even know anything about chess. Right. So ancestry plays a role. Indians, Chinese, and Jews. <laughs> Without even checking, I know it's about chess, right? Because no. if you check their their history, right? They are they are more likely to to. So if to, even not just even not just between the genders, like yeah, between, between continents, between races, actually. Hmm. I don't. I don't. It's it's all my most grounding and sobering views. I don't you know, care about equality at all. So yes, one thing I have. 
um lot of socialist friends and that's bad i know i know but i don't discriminate that's a bad habit <laughs> yeah don't discriminate but i wait <laughs> but i did it and wait so yes here's what mistake they make financial inequality is something they blame on capitalism and i think that's just lazy there's no point in human history where human beings are financially equal yep so now the, another thing about equality because i want to transition into another topic here is that this idea that all men were born equal you don't they, my they, idea it's I, I, that's like one of the things i, I dismiss right that is obviously untrue here's an example i actually it, it is not true that all men are born equal obviously all, all men are not born equal Obvi- obvious obviously but our conscience is so rule of law conscience is retarded all men are not so. born equal okay this this that's a, this is a random example okay at bit, mm-hmm. Usain Bolt was already a faster runner than me. At bit, without an hour of practice. At bit, mm-hmm. without ever being on the track, because he's obviously slower than I have. Than I am. Yeah. He has genetics, mm-hmm. right? Because you cannot be, you cannot get as tall and as huge and as strong as Usain Bolt with steroids. Oh, I was so. You cannot. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was so training. You cannot get that body in the gym. It's impossible for it to be able in a gym, right? Um, you know, aside from that, from physical characteristics, the kind of determination, grit, energy that I put into training every day is something that I cannot do. Now, what about what about on the, on the legal perspective that all men are born equal? Because you know, it was the no. American Constitution that um, the, their Declaration of Independence. Firstly, in the legal perspective, we're talking about ethics now because that's basically what it is about, yeah, right? Yeah. You can say that. All humans have inherent human words, right? Like, all, all humans are at least worth something, right? They have inherent human words. But I think that, they think but thing is that even if you say that, right, yeah. it does not mean that all humans are have the same words. Mm. Do you have, they, they, can have, they can all be humans that have the same like, human words. Recognized as a human but, Yeah, but it does not mean that they have the same. For example, now, if, let's there's, there's, there's do an extra example. If they were like, uh, a extremely smart scientist, right? Who had like, <clears throat> who has who solved global warming, like made a new a new band of fuel. You know, energy. Yeah, that was. Yeah. He, he can he can make that. Yeah, yeah, no military, right? But he can make it, right? Like if you like, if you invest in his studies and whatever, and you now find out that that guy is a serial killer. It sucks for people they killed. It sucks for them. We won't put we won't put him in prison. Forget about it. Mm. It sucks for people they kill that are raped and so, whatever. So, but sometimes value kind of outweighs. Exact, exactly. So if this person is so just a common man. Even in a legal sense, mm-hmm. right? Even in a legal sense, the people that just have too much value to the state to be killed off and be imprisoned. I'm just, I'm telling you the fact. If, for example, the, there were Nazi scientists working on there. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, so they it's they like, these are guys, scrambled these are guys, it's like, these are guys that work for the Nazis. <laughs> Their, their, their generals and whatever were executed, but they had to keep them because at Nuremberg trials, not not many scientists showed up to that trial. Exa- exactly, and these are people that like you know that they if they wanted to like arrest them and incriminate them and put them on trial, they would be able to do it. They, but, but they, they did, have to say that participation. But they did not sentences. because they know how valuable they are. You cannot, you cannot meet Nazi scientists. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot educate Nazi scientists. <laughs> you have to just find them. <laughs> you have to find them like like real Pokemon cards. Exactly. You cannot make them. You yeah. can't say, okay, let's kill this. Let's kill scientists. You just take a bunch of ten year old, a bunch of two year olds, and just put them in a school. And in the next twenty years, you get. But you cannot do that. I mean, that's a lot of investment. Even if even if you do the investment, you yeah. cannot do it. It's not. Do you possible. think? Do you think it's always been the case? Because what my belief is that it's a judeo christian value or judeo um abrahamic value that you know most of our laws are extracted from the religious corpus you know traditions that have always existed and then really really not sure well my idea my, my I think question, almost many of our laws go back many of english english common law um was developed outside of christianity we we'll notice this because in other in the Christian East, right, yeah. those laws were not developed. Mm. So it's probably something to do with evil specifically, not Judeo-Christian values. Okay. Because it was not only in evil that Christianity was in. 
Okay, so what I was trying to say. to say in, the, in Eastern Europe, right? But it was only like Northern Europe, the British, Wait, the French. Where do you mm-hmm. think it spread from? But I I really don't have, I have maybe I'll say the Greeks, right? Because the Greeks are like, Greeks had, uh, uh, they have uh, some ties with the Egyptians and then. They had some dedicated corpus of such laws, right? Then okay. the Romans and then. Romans can also tell everything from them. Yeah. So. They are gods, they are philosophies. I'm looking at you, um, this guy. I can't remember his name. What I was trying to drive at is that, do you think it has always been the case that, you know, all men are born equal? Because I want to use this um, rationalization to, to kind of transition to talking about slavery. Because that was when it was rare for any civilization to say mm-hmm. your life as a man is equal to this man's life. Therefore, obviously, it's from... For I, I don't think it's, it's only in the last maybe hundred years that humans are maybe on the other maybe like seventy eighty years, mm-hmm. they must have started thinking seriously that all men are born equal and whatever. It's never been it's never been the the, the norm in human history, mm-hmm. because even even people from even people with the same skin for both from different villages like into themselves like with equal human words right. The reason why the reason why it's not as if Humans are just very, very, really nice now yeah. that we don't go on raids to kill other people. Because those guys, for example, now those people, um, for example, now if a village, village A, attacks village B and kills everybody in village B, not because village A starts brutal and ruthless, right? But they, do, they simply don't think people in village B are human beings. What will you say about what will, what will we do to them? Do you think that's, that's something that is used in war? Because uh, in yes, most, most war um, cases, you have to humanize your opponent. So they really don't, they, they really see it's basically the same to them, same thing to them as killing a ram. Wow. Someone I know a ram that can speak English, but too bad. <laughs> someone, someone I know said, um, nationalization is probably one of the worst kind of opium for the masses to consume. That is socialist, I mean. No, like, Young any, any form of nationalism. It's better than socialist. I will not say. You ain't got to too many useless people. <laughs> I will not say. I will not say too many so useless I'd, guys. I'd, you know, looking back now at, um, at slave trade, yeah. it's easy for us to, to say, ah, oh, if I were, you know, one of these people that had slaves, I'd most likely free these people who are most likely never you, you, Most likely, you would most likely not. You could, you, you, would, you would probably treat your slaves well, right? Like, because obviously you bought them with a lot of money. I don't want your best friends to go to this. That's what people don't really really realize that it's it was not really that common for slaves to be killed and and treated as objects. Brutalized, brutalized to the extent where they would not do their work because it's a lot of impact. It's like beating your car. It's not cheap. I when I was in when I was in when I was writing American history in I think in twenty nineteen, I realized that even in the American Civil War, like only five percent of the northern of the southerners had slaves. Five percent. Yeah. Most people that well, died and fought in that war on both sides did not have slaves, could not afford slaves. Mm. Was but we were all the people, right? So was like everyone so when people said oh the American Civil War was about slaves, I was like, okay, maybe it was, but the people on the battlefield were not clean because they wanted to own slaves. It was just not true. Because they could not own it anyway. Okay, now that's on America. There's something funny I hear a lot. Um this rhetoric thrown around among people that the reason Africa the reason Africa is underdeveloped is that the Europeans took away all their able bodied people during the slave trade. Yeah, I read that that foolish argument in Water <laughs> Wooded. Name is Water Wooded, no Water Wooded. The evil he has done yeah. is too much. That is just look how evil people have developed Africa. It's a cut. You will know how many times someone have said that you can't read what I wouldn't. Fuck him. Fuck, he's a foolish nigga. Now, number one, what I wouldn't in his book, I think. He wouldn't. He wouldn't. His book was ag- argued that um, population was like the main driving force of development or what, or something mm-hmm. like that. And that because there's still like two million able bodied men, it's. Kind of affected the, yeah. the society. But at the point, I think, at the, at the point where you. The Europeans around the fourteen hundreds or whatever. The most populous nation in the world was it was in China, it was the Ming Dynasty in China, right? That the ships, that the people. 
they are the population. But they did not do the industrial revolution. So they were still stuck in the feudal system. Exactly. So your 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 arguments can all start from the point of population boom is what leads to development. Obvi- it's obviously not true. And some of us, I think, it, not I think it, it actually has the opposite effect because more overpopulation means less resources. And less resources means you actually have to either find a way to get resources. And what the Japanese did was became imperialist. And, you know, after their Meiji restoration period, they started, like, conquering almost the entirety of China and, and then they entered partly, in, they went to war with Russia in 1905. So the argument that population somehow leads to prosperity is like, you know, it does not work. It's, it's, us, it's just obviously not true. And the point is that we said, oh, how we will develop Africa. What was, what was Africa doing before Europe came? What do I push back and say that the, the development, you know, says um, the Europeans reached some stages of development mostly through their warfare and the need for uh, industrialization. Africa would also reach that stage naturally. What's, 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 the, what's the evidence for that? I think the ones I've heard is comparison because that's, that's supposed to be like natural when the, order. When by, by the time Europeans had contact with Africans, yeah. Europeans were like years and years and the Africans basically thought they were gods. You, you think, you think, you think it's just like you think the 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 kings who just signed treaties with British sided because they felt like these are nice people, because they were scared. They saw the kind of firepower, the kind of meds, and the kind of tools that the European had. The Europeans had. Yeah. They, they, they didn't just sign treaties with them because they they were they were dumb or they were they didn't know what they were doing. They, were, they just felt significantly they knew, they, they feel significantly inferior. Mm. And you would feel significant if, for example, now if humans as we are now, we get we get aliens who can already man, manipulate nuclear power. We would feel and we are still, we are still using guns as well. We would still we would feel significantly inferior to them. It's just normal, right? They colonize us and you know o- on, the order goes on. Hundred percent, right? So it's not as if they just felt the way they would wing into signing whatever. Or now, now, being... now, once again on slavery, um, most people have this claim that the Europeans came and they conquered Africans and Africans went into slavery, slave trade. Now, the reality is that Africans were largely already into slave trade before the advent of the Europeans. Obviously, they would be. <clears throat> And there's no mention of of the trans saharan Arab slave trade, which lasted for over seven centuries. It's exactly. Exactly. Seven centuries. So for you know the the, the cope I read off for now is that they say, Oh, it's not the same sort of you know, it's not the same sort of slaves, right? Because but they'll say, Oh, Jaja Kubu was the slave. Do you think the continental taking changed the entire narrative of what the magnitude of slavery is like to be, you know, taken from here and sold there? Or bought here and sold here and like just walk through the desert kind of slave trade. It really does not matter. Slavery is slavery. Yeah, I don't think it matters. But there are many other, lots of lots of even some of them even professors and PhD holders they'll be like, it's not the same thing. The the African slavery, the slaves could become kings, the slaves could do whatever, the slaves could do it. Eh? It does not matter. Our slave trade, our slave, but then there you are like a field slave. It really does not matter. Slavery is slavery. No matter. I don't, I, don't, I don't feel it's an important distinction because even that that is not true, right? You know, most most slaves had obviously lower, so qual- lower quality of life than their master. This is just a normal expectation in anywhere, right? No slave was treated, no 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 slave was treated like the way the child or the master were treated, right? They were obviously still treated as slaves, right? And never, even in situations where the slaves could become Kings like for example, Jaja Bokobo became a king or something. Yeah. Upon mm-hmm. become becoming slave. It was true, it was not true regular it was not true regular process, it was true it's a set of intrigues, right? I think Jaja Bokobo's master's master died, master didn't have any child to hand over to. Yeah. And then was the most important slave in the household. And then he had his own I think he had his own called him both parts or something, because it was like an army or house something. Then he had his own um, you know, his own house, then time making 
when you can then go share some without beat people or beat as to other people and was not just straightforward, right? For example, this time, I don't like like it was like, was like a set of political intrigues. It was not just oh, okay, wow, well, yeah, yeah, you are good as you are just as good as any other man in our society. Let's just make you a king. No, it was not that easy okay, for him. So, now, yes, and that thing. Most Pan Africanists yeah. or Afrocentric people yeah. will throw away the narrative that Africa was some form of utopia before the advent of you know the Europeans like there was little or no amount of slavery. I, mean, I don't like I don't like talking on Africa, but it was never like Africa has never been on YouTube. No, I mean like I don't like the idea too, but I feel like there's a lot of propaganda sentimental propaganda propaganda going on and you know they are easy to believe because you can just look at your desolate situation and be like point fingers at these people and that makes it easier for you. So that narrative kind of goes around like, oh you see very Marxist school. I went to the bookshop and most most of the bookshops I saw were all Marxist, like pro Marxist, um, development, anti West, under development, anti West. So this this narrative that, you know, people who are not capable of reading outside the school or outside the classroom well, are going to consume is that okay, Africa was kind of good and was good until the Europeans came around everything, took our resources, took our people and replaced our systems with something far inferior that, that people can never get acclimated to. Now, this is an entire thing that I want you to uh, give your thoughts to. Just guy put that question. I, I didn't really get. I didn't really get to. Okay, so this narrative, yeah, is that Africa was the place to be, yeah, until the Europeans, yeah, and it is easy for people to believe that because of the sentimental, you know colonialism and they took our people and took our resources narrative that is being thrown around. So why do you think it's easy for people to fall into that? I think because um mostly because of whites are whites are the only ones that are very self conscious about their role in slave trade. Arabs don't feel that way. Arabs don't feel that way. Right. Um so because of this self consciousness, they are prone to producing scholarship. Because most of the people that actually see these things are mostly white. Have you really noticed like most of the leading scholars in all these Afrocentric spaces and um socialist spaces are okay. Africa was Africa was exploited. Most of them are actually white. Mm. Most of the leading scholars, the 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 the, the, the foundation now academics right? most of them are actually white. So the point is that yeah. and maybe it's like a pathology when they ate themselves or whatever. I have no idea. But these guys actually push out. They're actually funding research. Most of the Afro, 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 Afrocentric schools in the West are actually really funded by white schools, right? There's no, there's no, they're not really strong. Most of the Afrocentric scholars you see, yeah. most of them in the world are in the West. They're not in Africa. At this point, do you think um, reparation is possible? Eh? Do you think reparation? She will, she will pay for reparation. Like we go to the Americas and say, okay, you are American. Even though they really okay. why would why would they pay reparations to who? Why are they paying reparations to? For, for for colonialism. You know, there were people in California, US, yeah, black people who said that for the struggle of slavery of their ancestors that yeah. deserves to be paid some amount of money. Yeah. By the states. Well hmm. hey, I don't know because the point is I just think, think, think is it I, even a moral clear? I I really don't I really don't like talking about this stuff because I'm not obvious I'm not I'm not a I'm not a black American right so I yeah. don't I don't I don't really get their struggles and whatever right but I don't think but I don't think they will get it number one. What about okay? Let's just talk about the, the realism of such claim. It's obvious. Like, would you would you collect the money from? It's obviously, it's obviously very bad. It's not the bad, but obviously very misguided request, in my own opinion. Um, but the thing is that in the American context, right, you think that America spends a lot of money on useless shit. Yep. That's the best argument I've actually seen for it. America spends a lot of money on useless shit. They give Ukraine, they give Israel billions and billions of dollars. I, I'm thinking if they are so prone to giving foreigners that amount of money, they should just give. <laughs> I think as it is. Now, they should give, they should give you free as it is. So. Last year, but outside, outside, outside of that, if yeah. I, I was, if like was a country like Nigeria, or was president of 
because that people were making that claim for reparations for something that happened hundreds of years ago. That I am not responsible for. I, I will not pay. Obviously, it's a very stupid claim because I, because you cannot even show me how it affects you today, right? Like you have. There are so many like ways to get their legs up. They have affirmative action. But then there's there like things like that. But and the, ask for more money again. You degree more money. What we, what we used to do. But then there's argument of systemic racism, which which is kind of like no which, such, which I, you can I, say is I, I, I also I also don't want to talk about Americans again. But I don't think this I don't think systemic racism exists. I don't think it's a thing. You cannot you cannot you can disprove it, but you don't want to talk about it. I I, I really don't want it will be like I'm both saying so I don't I, I mean like I, it doesn't really affect me any way, so yeah. I I really don't like. It's like when your family, when somebody tears shit over, is having issues with your own family, I I you are not going to wake you up know, to topic in your own house every morning. Like ah, okay, you are correct, but even if you are correct, I mean, yeah. <laughs> this like, okay, there's, no, there's no point for you. Let like, them mind their business. Like, again, you, again, you know. again. Speaking of people moving from one place to another, yeah, I want to talk about UFOs. Now, off air, I asked you uh, which you find scarier. That, um, what do you say so crazy? I know we're almost done. <laughs> really? I asked you which you think is scarier that we are alone on this blue rock yeah. in this universe or that we are not alone. And you answered that it does not matter, it does not matter. whether or not we are alone or whether or not we are not alone. The universe is astoundingly big. To get to Andromeda, right? If you have five hundred fifty percent the the speed of light, to get to Andromeda will take us fifty thousand years. The next uh, galaxy, galaxy. Right? the next the, the closest galaxy to us, and that there are, is it hundreds of millions of galaxies, right? I don't know. Millions. Now, imagine the chances that there is no human intelligent life in all those galaxies is like me. There's obvious, there's obvious, like, the chance it will be so unlikely, it will be extremely unlikely for humans to be the only intelligent species. In the entirety it, of the universes and the it, galaxies. It's extremely unlikely. What is likely is that there are bunches of other species, right, and there are also intelligent ones, but they're also facing the same problem that we are facing, which is how to go faster. Which is groceries. How to go, no, no. How to go faster than the speed of light? Because speed of light is speed of universe, like the universal constant, right? You just how fast things can be in the universe, right? And if if that's the universal constant, to be impossible for any other species to leave their galaxy and explore the world, it's just not possible, right? So we are probably not alone, but it probably will not matter because we'll probably never see any aliens ever, even if they exist. But you know, you must have seen a lot of reports going around that there's a flying object and flying to do as ah, flying spaghetti. Ah. And aliens. Yeah, alien, if aliens have the power to get to it, any alien power that's part to get to it will not just come and be come and be showing themselves sometimes in the middle of the night. They will, they will come to take over. <laughs> they, will, they, will they come to show us Shiga, they will show us Shiga with minimal efforts. That's just the fact. So, any 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 species that can conquer the speed of light and yeah. can bend space time. Yeah. They're going to show us levels of unbelievable shaggy. Mm. So it does think that just but that was that's just what I feel. Anything that can make us have an alien problem is over for the, it's over for our planet, it's just over. It's as yet. Because they'd have to travel Same. light years. Millions of years. light years. They'd have to have and if they can go millions of light, they have to expend a lot of energy, a lot of logistics, a lot of resources. First, just get and then start flying so, 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 so around. It's not possible now. Why would they even? Why would they call, just study us after explaining that oh, energy? Like, yeah, guys, we've been we've been lonely. Yeah, we kind of we just want to come and see AI. Even humans, if humans could bend space, right? Would you just travel to some intelligent space and say, "Oh, we are humans, see us"? But Peace. you know, you know, we have this desire to want to get there because humans are very um. Exploratory animals. There's no matter how exploratory we are, anything that makes us expend that amount of resources to get anywhere, it has to be existential. Like a threat to us. Yes. Like maybe we are dying and we need water. Yes. But you know, this would be the narrative that is shown in most alien movies. Like they don't have water, therefore they found it, or they are they need something that is missing somewhere. Yeah. So it's almost when 
It's almost in ex- extreme pieces. And, and the funny thing is that it is like it is like a perfect place for intelligent species like us. If if they are intelligent species, it would be like a perfect place like for carbon based species like us. Right, that take on oxygen that need water that is sunlight, right? It's perfect. That you assist with gravity. So anything that makes anything that makes them land, they didn't land on Jupiter, they land on you, and they land on Mars. In land on, on like Earth. Yes. Don't wipe us all out. So it's not it's an irrelevant question, which is scarier. Because by the time we know the answer, <laughs> it's over. <laughs> it's over. Yeah. I, the answer will not even matter at that point. It won't matter. Damn. Now I want I, I kind of want to look at this in a the humanoid perspective. Like imagine living, you know, when they find when they find um when they found um new continents, it's usually called especially from the European theater, theater it's usually called New World. And when the uh the new world is left for other continents, the new world becomes the old world and then more new world. So what's up with humans and Looking about and wanting to know what's up with them. Well, I think it's I think it must, it must like a very very old species. Do you know, like at some like over one hundred three thousand years or hundred thousand years, that almost almost happens that we walking right. So that's a lot of evolutionary pressure, a lot of evolutionary a lot of um of our environment shaping our our behavior, our cognitive process. Number one, animals there are explaining our curious. Animals like I, for example, I, I saw I saw a video about how to get how to get the monkey to talk, right? So the the guy wanted to make the monkey tell him where the where there's water in yeah. the area. So he went to a, a beetle eel, right? Where the monkey was looking at him. If he asked was putting something in, in the beetle eel, he put now put some sweet inside the beetle eel, right? Now I left. The monkey was now very curious. On watching the guy put something in the eel, now when they put his hand there. Now goes trapped, right? And now tied the monkey. Now get the monkey solved to make the monkey testy. After I tied the monkey for one day, now release the monkey. The monkey was not even too testy to even check whether they are fully immune. Just about to go and drink water. Yeah. So I might have found out where there's a, a water in the in the area, right? I think that my point is that animals, before even talking about humans, animals are actually very curious, right? So when they are humans, right? Like, because we're higher animals, of course, there is more intelligence, small way to such are complex thoughts and stuff like that. When we have like when um we have this drive, right, to find out something, yeah. You put a lot of effort into it, into a lot of resources. So of course it differs by um by humans. So humans are not as curious as other ones, right? But the thing is that the the, the driving the driving trait of humanity, generally speaking. Is our curiosity? We always want to find out. More. That's that's basically what all of science is. Mm-hmm. That's basically what what is to drive explorers, right? And that's most basically driving us now because we have we have sent rovers to Mars, we have sent rovers to our solar system, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So it's just the nature of humanity. It takes it takes about six months roughly to get to Mars. I imagine. And I don't think we've ever gotten to Saturn before. We just have images of this planet. Can you imagine? It's not even obvious that we can survive there. So we cannot actually. We cannot, yeah. Mass and Mokos makes us makes what what makes us make us an interplanetary species by taking us to Mars. Anybody that goes to Mars is going to come in suicide within a year. Okay, that's interesting. Now I feel like maybe it's just because humans are social animals and have you seen this? This experiment, we are like a rag. I can always wipe my face or take a towel or something. I think you can use this. I think there was an experiment recently, uh, last century, where a bunch of rats. Who put person to make it into the, into the final court, too? Don't worry, I can switch the camera to my space. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the boys sweat like it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so in this experiment, these rats were given. Basically everything they could need, yeah. and at the point they stopped giving birth. Yeah. I think it was a bad effect of that. Really? Yeah. So these rats they got bored and they got fat and you know they almost saw the material material acquisition they could ever want was just right there. So they will kill themselves and you know engage in all forms of horror. Yeah. 
that's actually a very good argument I read on Twitter recently. And um, one of my friends is um uh, one, one one of my Twitter friends actually has a goal of um He's a socialist. He's a socialist. He's like uh You associate with them. I don't I don't have a socialist oh that was socialist too. I can't not. What do you mean by a socialist friend? Better dead than red. So this is your friend, what about them? So they wanted like their goal is actually a uh, transhumanist future, right? Yeah. So they want this a future where there's there's a lot of abundance in one society. Them the fan, right? There's a lot of abundance in one society, right? So like everybody like has um whatever they want, right? There's no pain, there's no sorrow, everybody can eat as much as they want. But, 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 but the point is that in that utopia, would people not just slide into more degeneracy? We didn't just become more degenerate. For example, now I I, I saw a comic once, yeah. And I, the first panel was one girl saying that one girl saying that, oh, you shout, you can if it's not affecting, you just leave. Like if it's funny to do something that is it's not affecting, why can't you just leave the person alone, right? And then the second panel, the guy was like this. He had, uh, he had like this thing on. He had um, he had what was his name like uh all those vision quest stuff like. That uh, Vision Pro, yeah, yeah, that's, that's something like that. And then he had on his arm, he had like an IV line leading to heroin, <laughs> heroin and cocaine, yeah. and he had like an auto master bit on his dick. <laughs> so, like, sounds like a we're like, oh, what do you mean? This guy alone, like, he's obviously enjoying himself, right? but he's obviously degenerate. Like, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, it's, yeah, this yeah. is having the most pleasure he can, obviously. Have. Like, it's in the pleasure cube. It's in the pleasure cube, but uh, looking from outside in, it's obviously the general, like, if you had, if you had a friend that was living like that every day, like, what the fuck like is wrong with you? Like, being tied with of cocaine, like, I'm mean, just sitting in the like, chair, yeah, like, yeah, you have the time thing. of your life, but what, this is not a way to live. This is, like, you will obviously think that's not a way to live. So I think that a, 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 a future, an utopian future for humans. It sounds like that's, um, that increase. It sounds like, like that's that. the story of what E. I, I, I've not watched the movie. You have not watched Wally? Yeah. My God. I've not watched Wally. I've not watched the movie. Have you heard of it? Have you heard of it? Yeah, but I've not watched it. You have to watch Wally. So Wally, um, in the space, like, humans have, humans have destroyed Earth. And in space, there's a there's a bunch of people there and they are, they are fat as fuck. And they're all on scooters. And it's just the most degenerate form yeah. of humanity. It's so crazy. That's, uh, that's how humanity... What do you think we get there? I don't, as, I don't think as, get, as I don't science think get in, my, in my lifetime. I don't think we get in my lifetime. Mm, you don't think? Uh, oh man, humans are we are slowing down. Did you, you know? We are slowing I, down. I, we are slowing down. Humans, I will notice. Population wise, but like discovery wise. Okay, well, <laughs> I feel like I I, I know what you're about to say here. So, the of good in the twentieth century was outstanding during the uh, the Cold War. It was. The, the leaps, like, yep. basically every decade was different from the next. And the thing is that every, every, every technological invention we are enjoying now is basically just inertia from the leaps in the 20th century. Mm. Everything about computer theory, um, mechanics, electronics, the phone, Bluetooth, everything, everything was everything. already invented then. So that, that's, last century was the peak. Was the peak. Was just like of my creativity. You just like you know that when when like when you press a brake on a car, right, you won't stop immediately, right? You will still keep moving. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. It just just what you're experiencing, and just like inertia from discoveries of the last century. Hmm. This century has not seen as much discoveries and as much scientific out innovations and leaps and inbounds as the last century. Yeah. Yeah. So of course. Smaller phones, better cameras, we have uh, Well, my, I, I don't think we'll get there. We have, fast, we have pretty faster cars. I'm not sure we have fast, I'm not a car guy, but I'm not sure we have faster cars. I don't, well, probably better, type, better missile systems, but these are all based on theories of the world, of scientific um, explanations that were given in the 20th century. I want to transition back to politics. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, especially this one that, that stems from American theater. Now, what most people call this is cultural Marxism. Yeah. You know, switching from um, switching from oppressor to oppressed, to um, no, switching from half not to halves, oppressor to oppressed, to 
having something else beyond just financial acquisition, material acquisition, like your identity precedes everything else. So now this leads to some kind of inter intersectionality. So does your race take precedence above your sexuality or your disabilities or abilities and all these things? So this identity politics is mostly what has infested American politics. My, my own, my own, my own take of view is just that I think of view is that um, most people who use identity politics because it's it's basically a crutch to get tired to get tired, right? Yeah. Because like, oh, um, I deserve this because I'm this. I deserve this because I'm a woman. Because I'm black. Because I'm Chinese. I'm whatever. I feel just like a crutch for people who are not accomplished, right? To to get out of their more accomplished mates. I just that would, what that would just what I feel. I think it's it's an excuse by the unaccomplished. <laughs> so you know what I what I get here. Right. What I get here is an argument against um, uh, what's it called? Something action. In America. Um, this thing that certain people en enjoy. I forgot what it's called. Let me out here. Um, affirmative action. Affirmative action. I, I I I really knew how 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 again I don't talk about black American politics whatever I didn't really know how bad it was until I started following some accounts on Twitter that um and it was by that there was like professional professional admissions professional IRNs and whatever what have you but I didn't really know how bad the the distance the extent was until I started like not started looking looking into it myself and yeah. that that will in some lawsuits that were taken to the Supreme Court and you see that like like fifty percent of people that are qualified get cut off because they're not of the they're not they don't have the right feel they don't mark this they don't have the um, right gender, they don't have the right race, they don't have the right so background. You have, you have to be like maybe black and then a woman and then bisexual and then I'm with minority and stuff, like, and stuff like that. And it's so mad because you'd be like in America, in America right now, there are, there are certain colleges that don't, that don't take tests. Like, you cannot fight, you cannot get into the college without, with a test. It's so mm -hmm. unlike how... Because in, in a way, the general admission system is even more, like, it's even more advanced and more colorblind and more meritocratic. Actually, because in America, you just have to write your jam, write your post jam. The scores will be tabulated and... we we'll see what you what the score. Yeah. But then you have to, like, actually write a long-ass essay up to, the, up to like, up to the subjective whims yeah. of the interviewer you have to have a if bunch of institution like if you know that you have to have, to have, have a bunch of things on your or your application that okay i was a member of a debate club or whatever when you can easily just use scores it's not a debate club in first I, I don't i really don't get the point when you can just really use scores SATs and or high school gps and stuff like that but when identity replaces merit, um, meritocracy i think um what you have at your heart is a degenerate system you know, um, Thomas Sowell made Thomas Sowell made this argument that um, the affirmative, affirmative action is not really favoring um, its own race, its black people, because you mismatch people who should be in different colleges yeah, I, in the I, wrong I, college. I read that. I read that argument. It says that in our in leads to a lot of to a high dropout rate. High dropout rate. Like we are competing with people that got here because they can survive here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we have yeah. to lower the cut off because you know you have this ethnicity, you have this sexual sexual orientation, and you know, yeah. If if this really bad. if this thing spreads like white white fire to the education, to the to STEM field, and to other fields, I think this thing would affect what you call um uh this inability to reach the peak because we we slow down in that way. It's people that should be should be in places of certain responsibilities. Will not be there yes. because it is being taken over by people who feel fit cutting political agenda. Yeah. I think politi um, identity politics in African society here is just something like a local. What do you say? Identity politics in a place here like Nigeria is just a Milokon. <laughs> you know, you know I, mean? I don't think I don't think identity politics. In Nigeria is just like a very ethnic country. I was still in a bunch so of ethnic people. politics, not, Et not I was talking about the people. Well, some, a lot of my friends that would be there, right? I don't mean that I don't mean that um election time because my sp I spotted that too cool, right? Yeah. During the election time, I was saying a lot of that. Look at this your guy cannot win. 
it's, it does that just how Nigerian politics is. He cannot win, right? And the worst he will do is to split the PDP votes, right? And get um Sumbu elected. That's actually the highest accomplishment he can get. But right? they were like, no, no, no. Like the the they have. I, I, I spoke to one of my friends, Tawa. I was like, no, they have some people in the north that will vote for them. That we win Lagos, we win for your states, we win the south. South South, even South South, only one like three states. <laughs> you win the South, I'm like, this is your, <laughs> this is your, electoral <laughs> like, I'm not working in Nigeria. <laughs> I'm a bunch of crazy houses in this country. And actually, it was, uh, it, it turned out that way because you can bet and count on certain people to vote certain way simply because of identity. Let me tell you, yeah, the, the Northerners, yeah. Northern, Northern voters will vote for Shekau before they vote for a Igbo Christian as president. That's just the truth. That's, look at, you can eat it, I can eat it, but that's just the truth. Yeah. Now, this uh, ethnic policy, political thing that um, has ravaged Nigeria so poorly, I think it begins just right at the inception of Nigeria itself. You know, because even our nationalist movement, like they plunged into regional politics instantly. You know, at at the points at the points where there was at the points we had um at the points we had independence, Nigeria had not been a United States for more than sixty years. No, at the points where the independence was just a United States for forty four, for six years, I think. Yeah. So, and it was not even the point where people were traveling all around. There was no they, they wouldn't talk were not that good. Yeah. So people were still in their ethnic. Kills. You know, you know, like today, where you can just talk, okay, I'm going to Kano, and you can just get the bus this night at Glory's God is Good Motors, and just go to Kano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At that time, like, maybe there's only one boy that goes to Kano in, in a week, mm -hmm. right? So you have to, like, actually really, really plan, save a lot of money, and make that travel, right? That's the point of good I depended. So even though they were setting nothing as well, I'd never seen a Yoba man before. I think West as well, I'd never even seen a Yoba before. Right. So it was too rapid for us to just like it was we're too west we're still like ethnic states. Like it was just like joining TV states together who didn't know each other. Yeah. And going there one one country, one country under one nation, under one flag. Other one is for your pocket. So it was inevitable <laughs> that our politics would start from other one, other one is for your pocket. Politics. After the second coup, right? Yeah. In in Obama just book, he said that in under his command, right, that the officer Soldiers, these are soldiers that have traveled all over Nigeria or that have mixed with your bazo. The Ausa soldiers were reporting streets to Ausa senior officers, not their actual platoon commanders or brigade commanders. He said there was one point that a guy had an issue with him in the battle. The guy took a platoon car and drove to Lagos to report his senior officer in Lagos instead of reporting to him, Basso Joy in the battle. They were taking their meals separately. You buzz with their own food, yeah. Also, with their own food, yeah. The only ones that are put separately. Yeah, yeah. They were training separately. He said when he was in Kaduna, he was, he was, he was never in, in Madonna. So when he was in Kaduna, they were having meetings. Like, his army, like, he was chief army engineer. Yeah. Senior, senior officers in the army were having meetings without advising him because he is Yoba. So it's, it's always been there. It's all, always been there. I will and never even, leave. Even over 100 years later. It will never. We still do. I'm telling you that it will never it leave. Time, it is our it last is, time. It will never. That's all. Look at, I was telling I was telling my friends that you want to, like, you, have, you want to bind a strong man. Yeah. Right? You have to face like a guy that is a strong man. Because <laughs> that's what we give you. That was the thing you kind of hope that I'm bind him. Mm -hmm. Right? You have to try to tell us that this is how Nigeria is. You know, there's no Nigeria. There's just a bunch of different nations. That is just how it is. There's no point lying to ourselves about it. This last election, we were just lying to ourselves. Not, not, not all of us. I, mean, I was not lying to myself. I, mean, I was, I was very honest to myself. That's why I chose article. A lot of Nigerian youths were just lying to themselves that, oh, we can unite and more Nigeria. And because obviously, not like some percent of the votes, if you don't have them in your pocket, you don't have anything, just forget about it. That's just the fact about it. You don't, you don't have anything. If you cannot win the North convincingly, you can't become president of Nigeria. So now, okay. So. Uh